Snakes are not normally thought of as saving lives, but one man is making it his business to re-up re their potential, no matter the risk. Jeff Glor is with us. Jeff, good morning. Charlie, good morning to you. We have long been fascinated and frightened by snakes, especially snake venom. We know it can hurt people. Can it also heal? Now I'm going to come your way. When Ken Darnell starts to work, everyone else starts to back up. This is a female. And of course, the females are always more difficult to deal with. Darnell collects and sells snake venom for a living. And just some gentle pressure here in the back. He's been doing it for 35 years and is milked by his estimate a collective 300,000 snakes. Finger on top. This is the important part. Yeah. Immobilizing the snake with your finger. He mainly deals with this eastern diamondbacks, the largest species of rattlesnakes. 200 of which he keeps in a small warehouse behind his home in southern Alabama. That's a gorgeous rattlesnake. Twice a month, Darnell takes them out of their plastic containers, one at a time, to collect their venom, which is then frozen and sold to scientists and drug developers. It's a dangerous and unpleasant process that few are willing to try. You've done this for obvious reasons. This guy's mad. A lot of people think I'm brave by working with venomous snakes. I just happen not to be afraid of venomous snakes. If you're afraid of that snake, you're going to hesitate when you have to move in to pick him up. As they say, he who hesitates is lost, and it will happen in snake handling. Have you ever hesitated? Uh, I don't think I've ever hesitated. It doesn't mean I haven't had an accident. This finger is not as big as it used to be because I lost a little tissue from it. Snake bite. Snake bite. What would happen if this snake bit you right now? Well, I would probably utter a few choice words, and then I would sit down for a minute and evaluate how serious it was. Uh, about one-third of rattlesnake bites are dry. If he didn't inject any venom, there's no sense going to the hospital. And that's the irony of Ken Darnell. A dry bite could save his life, but wet bites are how he makes a living. Uh, I hear it rolling down in there. Yeah. I love that sound. A very decent living. $200 plus for a gram of snake venom. It's a lucrative business. Oh, there are some snake venoms that cost uh, 10 times that much. It's not a matter of money. Anyone who's doing it just for the money is doing it for the wrong reason, and I think more likely to have accidents. Darnell says he does it for the right reason, medical research. One obvious use for snake venom is the creation of anti-venom. But some scientists think we've barely tapped its full medicinal value. Come here, we take some samples. Paul Reed is CEO of Celtic Biotech. He says several drugs derived from snake venom are already on the market, like Integralin, which is used by hospitals to help heart attack victims. But his company is hoping for a breakthrough. The other exciting parts are, are the anti-cancer applications. The rattlesnake and, and the viper venoms are, are very intriguing when it comes to potential applications to therapies. I think they're going to be very exciting in the near future. The main hurdle facing this kind of research is that studies based on snake venom are often seen as snake oil. It's not the public who are, who are uh, anti the idea of using snake venoms. Essentially, if you're desperate, you're going to use anything. But I think the medical community needs to kind of catch up on the science. Venom is protein. Ken Darnell is no scientist, but he says he believes in their work. And at 68, he has no plans to back off. I expect to be doing it until I drop. Why? Well, why not? There's no heavy lifting. All you got to do is pick up an eight-pound snake. Why not? Because you could maybe lose another finger. That's exactly right. <laughs> so does milking them hurt the, hurt the snakes? No, not if it's done uh, infrequently and not if it's done the right way. I like how he pointed out he said that females are snakes are more difficult than male snakes to deal with. That was not my line <laughs> at all. That was his line. I was advocating that that be taken out of the piece. <laughs> totally inappropriate. Absolutely. Did he explain why that is so? Did he explain? I think he was joking around a little bit. Oh, yeah. Having okay. some fun with Molly, our producer, a little bit. Yeah. Oh. I didn't find that amusing. No, no. Um, <laughs> but it was yeah. in the piece, and it's, it, 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 it's, it's fascinating stuff. No, it is. It was a great story. Thanks, Gil. Thank you, Jeff Glork.